Assalamu alaikum. A uh, few, two questions. There was a call uh, a few years ago by uh, Tariq Ramadan, a famous intellectual from uh, Europe. He, he called for the suspension of the hudud in the Islamic countries. And uh, I guess one of his reasonings was that the uh, uh, segmentation of Sharia would be harmful to the overall uh, application. So how harmful is it to take just aspects of Sharia and apply it separately? The second is many of not only Westerners, non-Muslims, but also a lot of Muslims when they think of Sharia, they think of killings, beheadings, stonings, uh, cutting the hand. Historically, why is it that we have reached this level of thinking of Sharia in this context? Thank you. <clears throat> well, I like the second question so much, I'm going to spend more time on it. Um, Muslims, in particular, are responsible for that, in that they've taken all of what is Islamic law and reduced it to a few highly potent symbols. And you cannot cry foul after that. You cannot reduce Islamic law that pertains. What is what is Sharia pertain? What what what? How did how did the Sharia govern people's lives in earlier times? Well, let me give you a few examples. Uh, if you're building a house, you you needed a permit. This is now 1,100 years ago, in the city of Baghdad in Damascus. You needed a permit, and you would not be granted a permit to 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 put a, a balcony in your house, except if that balcony was something like, um, I think, eight feet from the ground up. This, this, is, this is Sharia, the much demonized and, 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 uh, and uh, radicalized Sharia. This is a Sharia that, that, that makes perfect sense to anyone who knows anything about building ordinances. Well, the reason they kept it at, say, 10 feet was simply because they had to have sufficient distance for camels to go by, especially with the howdah in there, with the, with, the, with the little box in. So they measured, it says the average height is somewhere from 9 to 12 feet, so you're, you're, that this is how high it just should be. They had, they had another law that said, when farmers come into the city, People should not stop them on the street outside the city to purchase the goods they buy and then sell it inside agencies. We know, we know who, makes, who makes big money today. It's not the producer. It's not the retailer. It's the guy in between who, who, who provides, who makes no substantive contribution to the commodity itself except to, to buy it from people and then sell it at, 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 a, at an inflated rate. There's a, actually a tradition of the prophet that says this is haram, very religiously uh, a clouded term. But it has to do with just average ordinances. And so there are literally hundreds of such rules that exist in this divine sharia that have to do with very pedestrian, normal things that you and I accept as being integral to a secular legal system. What Muslims have done over the past 100 years is taken certain aspects, the most radical aspects of the, of the Sharia, and reduced all of Islamic law to that. In the case of women, for instance, hijab. The only, the only aspect of the law that applies to a female is the extent to which she can uncover her body. With regard to non-Muslims, for instance, it is how to keep them as second-class citizens. With regard to the laws of, of, of Talion, it's the amputations of the hand and so on. So when you look at that, you can actually create a basket of, say, 10 or 12 legal injunctions that can be paraded around as, this is the Sharia. And I would challenge you to find 
the hundreds of, of injunctions and rules that are commonsensical, universal, albeit peculiar depending on areas in which people live, that nobody knows of as being also part of the Sharia. These are equally part of the Sharia. But this is the one part that gets the most coverage, and these are the parts that nobody bothers to look at. And that has come about largely because Muslims, Islam itself was demonized as being inhuman because it demands these particular injunctions. And Muslims sanctifying that, saying, well, no, this is not just not demonic, it is actually angelic or from God, and this is what it does to society, when, when in fact, when you look at how the law was looked at in earlier times, scholars understood that the law was a deterrent and that the law had to be controlled and that it could very easily be abused. And so, for instance, none of these laws, even today, can be applied without the existence of a state structure. If there is no political authority, then the laws that apply to hudud, which is generally uh, the, most, the, the most talked about areas of Islamic law, these laws cannot be applied. On the other hand, there is today an emerging fringe of, of proselytizers within the Christian community in particular, who are alarmed by what is, what is a response to, to the Archbishop's comments the other day in, in England, by the strength of Islam in terms of the, of the average Muslim's commitment to his faith and the weakness of the Christian community within England itself. And so this alarm, alarmist reaction then, then forces them to reduce what they know to be something very broad and complex to its most egregious and most, most, most unacceptable uh, icons. When you have Sharia in, 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 in England, then you're gonna have the amputations of hands. That's not even allowed in Islamic law without, without the existence of a, a, a state authority. And what the, what, the bishop, what the archbishop was talking about was exactly the things that even American law is, is accommodating to a, to, a, to a great extent. That you have Muslims living here, they live, a, in, they live in two worlds at the same time, a Muslim world and a secular world. And, and, and if we do not address these things, we would not be doing uh, justice to their needs and their aspirations. There's, there's some wonderful examples of how secular courts have actually accommodated or addressed issues that stem from purely religious uh, communities. Good evening. 